All right. Uh, good morning. Um, so, I thought I'd do a quick update since I'm doing a lot of thinking and stuff that isn't actually good to watch on camera um, or is time consuming. So, uh, still working on the generator thing. Uh, last time we checked it out, got it to spin. It's making voltage. Uh, I'm going to build a load for it now and then uh, have to do some testing on belt material. Uh, because it's so small, uh, I'm trying out a few different things. Uh, or I'm going to try a few different things just because I would like to use the best material I can find. But uh, I have this ribbon that uh, was the first test belt. I made a few of these up. Um, the problem was that the center section of the ribbon and there's two main uh, long threads on the sides of the ribbon and the center section was stretching so I was getting a bow out in the middle. So um, a thing that a lot of belts have uh, is continuous belting, like your steel belted radial has wire that runs circular around the outside of the tire to help keep the shape. Um, so I just took a sewing machine and stitched thread straight along the length of the belt uh, to help keep that in check. Um, I also took another one. Uh, this is actually I don't think I used this one for the test. Uh, and I double layered the ribbon. So it's two layers stitched together there. Um, and that definitely feels a bit better tensile strength. And also, this is fabric. Uh, I took a piece about that wide and folded it in thirds and stitched it. Uh, that's another pretty solid feeling belt. Um, and this is actually a piece of leather I found and I checked it, it doesn't stretch too much so I'm gonna I made that up stitched it end for end uh, with adhesive E6000 on it um, so we'll see how that works and then the last thing I thought I'd try is I have the ribbon on one side and then I did stitch leather and this brown piece of leather was too thin and stretchy to use on its own so it's leather with a backing of ribbon um, and all that is to find out what is going to provide the best um, power transfer without slipping but We won't get to that until we're testing for real. Uh, to that end, I picked up a couple of these cheap digital multimeters because uh, the way to measure the power is going to be to measure the voltage and the current output from the generator under load uh, and try to increase that gradually until uh, we think the engine is loaded to the point of almost quitting. So uh, I have a pair of these and I'll be hooking those up to the test outfit once we have that assembled. But for now I found a box. Uh, it's definitely a very cheap one from something or other but I got it at the thrift store for a couple bucks. Um, it's got plywood construction, so the sides are pretty flat, and I'll be able to use that for mounting when I get this put together. Um, but first things, I need to build up and try to figure how to build a load that I can adjust for this. So a few different things. Um, Uh, 
I got these big power transistors. So uh, looks like this is a 7 watt transistor, which for it to output 7 watts from 1.2K is uh, pretty decent current and voltage. So uh, anyhow. Um, but I've got three of these that are 1.2K, so if I put them in line and switch it so that I can add one in, it'll be a 1.2K load and then a uh, 600 ohm load, and then when I add the third one in, it'll be down to a 400 ohm load. So that should definitely uh, provide plenty of load for the generator um, setup. <clears throat> and we'll, uh, yeah, try those in that configuration. I also grabbed a tiny motor while I was at the little surplus store. So I just ran to, um, there's a place near me called American Science and Surplus. Uh, up in the Twin Cities, there's Axe Man, all kinds of little outlet shops around the country in America. Anyway, and they have odds and ends for stuff like this. So, uh, And then I got a few sliding switches. Um, because I think when those mount in the box, they'll look really nice. Uh, and then I just have to get all this wired together. Um, I'm going to have to do some quick math first to decide how to arrange these resistors. Because uh, like I said, right now I'm just guessing to do the three that I can keep adding in series to go from 1.2K down to 400 ohm. But I might uh, so do the math and uh, have to arrange it 1.2K plus 1.2K to 2.4, and then that would get to 1.8K. We'll see. Um, the nice thing about the motor is that the load of the motor if I hook that up, it's going to change based on the load of the the actual load it's running. So free running, it'll have a lower resistance. And then if I just find a way to put a little pressure on the shaft, it will uh, increase the load from the motor. So that should uh, provide a little bit of a variable mode uh, load. But that's the kind of mess we're in now. I found some scrap wire from a ceiling fan installation, so I'm going to use that for the main wire and <clears throat> get this all mocked up and probably have a diagram for it. Uh, and then once I have it mocked up, I'll be able to test some more. <laughs> 